My name is Olivia Brandwine, class of 2022, and I'm a student guide at the Mount Holyoke College Art Museum. As a student guide, I created a five object tour and gave it to the public, but then I decided to turn it into a pop-up book for my art class. Um, so welcome to my pop-up tour of Finding the Familiar Art and the Everyday. This tour is about how everyday functional and familiar objects can be transformed into art. So it makes sense that this tour has become a functional art object. The first artwork on my tour is the 1973 painting Craft Salad Dressing by the artist Janet Fish. In some ways, it made sense to turn this 2D painting into a 3D pop-up because the original work has so much depth and movement. The excitement and vibrancy of the painting transform ordinary bottles into vessels of light and color, not just dressing. Next up is this Japanese silk mice and kimono made sometime between 1920 and 1940. The way it stands in this pop-up is a lot like how it stands on display in the museum. I was drawn to how sculptural it appears standing like this without anyone in it. It makes me think about the relationship between function and art. Is this kimono only considered an art object once it enters into a museum collection and ceases to perform its original function? This work was called Broom Jumpers and was made in 2019 by the artist Bisa Butler. This was one of the hardest for me to translate into a pop-up book because the original material is so important. Butler is a fiber artist and creates giant life-size quilt portraits. She uses old vernacular photographs of African Americans as her references. The reference for this one is from the 1930s. Butler's fabric choice helps craft their story and bring the figures back to life. I used a printout of the original to preserve the detail. The diamond ring fabric on the man's pants helps craft the imagined story that these two are newlyweds. This work is called Katrina and was made in 2003 by the artist and educator Jefferson Pinder. The original artwork is a kind of patchwork made of strips of ceiling tin that he salvaged from the wreckage of Hurricane Katrina. Being able to see the physical representations of destruction, like peeling paint, can create a greater understanding and empathy about the disaster. Everyday objects of people's lives, like ceiling tin, can carry their stories in very powerful ways. The last object on my tour is this untitled pharmacy chest made by the artist Joseph Cornell in 1945. The sculpture consists of several identical small bottles in a pharmacy chest. The bottles are filled with little objects like a feather, a scroll of paper, and watch gears, among other things. Cornell made seemingly mundane objects important by placing them in bottles and arranging them in specific ways. By intentionally framing things, art has this power to draw attention to things that would be overlooked. And museums also have this power, so it's important to pay attention to what artists and museums choose to highlight. That concludes my tour. I hope you enjoyed getting to see my interpretations of this selection of artworks. Thanks for watching my pop-up tour, Finding the Familiar, Art on the Everyday.